Hi, my name is Hector Garcia. I want to show you how to do expense allocation to classes in QuickBooks. Uh, first of all, let's kind of go over the, the specific scenario that we're going to cover here is uh, income and cost of goods sold will have classes associated with it. Uh, secondly, the expenses don't have any classes or maybe they're using an overhead class. Um, this technique is it's is designed to be used in lieu of journal entries, so this should replace journal entries and be much faster than doing it via a journal entry. This only works with QuickBooks Accountant Edition uh, 2013 or above, so your 2013, 14, 15, 16, only on those will work, and you have to have Excel installed. So let me first um, explain what I mean by these two here, income cost of goods sold have classes and expenses don't have classes. So let's say in your QuickBooks file here, you um, associated all the income components and all the cost of goods sold components to a class. So, so for example, you see the new construction class has a, has a whole bunch of income items and expense items. Uh, and then <clears throat> I'm going to collapse this here. And then the remodel class has a bunch of income and cost of goods sold. But um, since the income and the direct expenses were pretty easy to classify in the invoices and in the bills, uh, the operating expenses like automobile, car, insurance, interest, payroll, those things are very difficult to classify because you would have to literally grab every single one of these expenses. I'll give you an example. And you would have to literally come in here and let's say we were going to split this, you know, 60% to one class and 40% to another class. I would have to literally sit here and make a, a manual uh, a class classification of every single expense. I would have to go in here and classify 60% of this to new construction, 40% to remodel. And this would be a really tedious process. So um, normally people would just uh, either leave the class empty. Uh, so just kind of like this, and then just do a, a journal entry at the end of the month, the period, whatever it happens to be. Or they would actually <clears throat> use some sort of overhead class and then reclassify it later, or maybe just leave it like that. But one of the very common cases that I have is, is my clients ask me, Hector, what I want to do is I want to know what my true profitability per class is. Because right now it looks like new construction is very profitable remodel also very profitable and then overhead which contains no income whatsoever it's running at a loss which that doesn't make any sense either so the idea is um what i want to show you is we're going to take all these expenses here uh, automobile insurance and we're going to spread them across the classes new construction or remodel and we're going to have to make some choices in terms of how what percentage we use and that's kind of what I want to cover here. So that's really what I meant by by that, by the income and cost of goods sold have classes, but the expenses don't. And then what I mean by use this technique instead of journal entries, I'll show you what I mean. What, what most people would do at this point, this is the conventional way, is, for example, they would pull in and do a journal entry. And then let me make this window smaller and make it sort of easier to read here. So they would do a journal entry. And let's say, for example, they wanted to move... Uh, automobile expense, so they would do something like this, automobile, and then they would reduce it by the total amount, 6844.94, and then do a split, and then we'll take, let's say, 40% of that is going to go to new construction, and 60% goes to remodel, and let's say just that's just an arbitrary percentage that, that we picked, I mean, I've, whatever technique you use to to, uh, to figure out the allocation that would be up to you. So and then they would, they would take and then they would uh, credit it out of overhead. And in this case, they would actually select each class. And there's nothing wrong with this, by the way. This is the traditional way of, of doing this. And, and you can achieve what you're trying to do. It's just very tedious. So I'm going to hit save here to kind of show you what ends up happening. And uh, let me just make sure that I'm moving it out of overhead into new construction and into remodel. I'll hit uh, save here and then I'll show you the report. And, and basically that's what happens. It takes it out of overhead, which is what we wanted to do. And we wanted to put it into each class. Now, how long this is going to take? Well, if you kind of think about it, I only got two classes. I could probably pull this off in about five to 10 minutes in a journal entry, but this is what I want to avoid. I want to, I want to, for the people that are using this technique already, I want to show you how to, how to do it better and faster. <laughs> All right. So let me go ahead and delete this. 
And let me show you uh, the technique that I use. Now, this technique, it, I haven't found any documentation anywhere on the web, so it doesn't have a specific name. Um, so I'm gonna we're gonna call it the Hector uh, allocation trick. Right? That's the only na name I can give it for the time being. So I'll show you what I'll do. First of all, I'll, I'll export this report to Excel. So the point is, when I export this into Excel, um, I will use Excel for two purposes. Uh, one, to maybe figure out what type of uh, percentage allocation I will use. And I can use uh, multiple methods. I can take uh, the gross profit and from each class and divide it by the total gross profit of the entire company. Or I can take the sales, the, the total sales, and multiply it times uh, divided by the total sales of the entire company, and that will give me uh, different percentage allocations. Now, the purpose of this webinar, and I'll make this font a little bit bigger, make it easier to read, is not uh, really to uh, encourage any particular method of, of, of expense allocation. Um, you could use an arbitrary amount, you know, 50-50, if you have three classes, 33, 33, 33, whatever you wanna use, but I'm just using the example that in this particular case, I'm going to use total sales as an indication of what percentage uh, I'm going to use for allocation. So I'm just going to take, uh, in this case, the total uh, the total income. So I'm going to go ahead and put a formula here of uh, total income for this class divided by the total income of the entire company. Uh, and then on the second one, I'll do the exact same thing. Uh, income for this class or the total sales divided by the total income for this company. And, and now I have a pretty interesting representation of, of how I'm gonna make the splits here. So so the logic here is that we're gonna take, in this case, we'll make this two bold here, make it easier uh, to read, but um, so the point the point is these two percentages will be now the, the dynamic number that is going to affect these expenses. So for example, automobile expense will now take the entire automobile expense that, that is not classified and we'll multiply times uh, that percentage. Um, and then, so I can just sort of drag that down. I'm gonna put uh, uh, this, the percentage signs here on the formula. This is more of an Excel thing, but, but basically what this does is by putting this, I have now an absolute reference. So when I drag that formula down, it's gonna keep that percentage. So I'm gonna grab that number and take that down here. Okay, so basically what I'm gonna do is when I do a journal entry, that's the number that I'm gonna put. Now, let me just make this bold, make it easier to read. Uh, the same token for, for this, I'm gonna do the exact same thing. So I'm gonna divide, in this case, uh, multiply the total times the percentage allocation, and I'll go ahead and make this an absolute reference by putting the dollar signs here uh, in, the, in the reference that basically allows me to drag it down and, and keep that percentage in there. So basically what I've done here is uh, I've, I've taken this number and I distributed it evenly across uh, my uh, my expense categories. Uh, so now I could do this in Excel and keep this in Excel and then just kind of zero these out. Whoops, whoops. Um, I'm going to copy and paste values here and make it a little bit easier to, to, uh, to see here. So, But I could actually zero these out something like this, and then I could use, if I wanted to, uh, my Excel uh, financial statement at that point to determine the profitability per class. But what I want to show you is, is not just this step, it's now taking it uh, and putting it into QuickBooks. And there's a little bit of a trick uh, that we're going to do here, so you kind of have to follow the steps uh, one by one. Um, so uh, we have to use QuickBooks Accountant Edition. And I think I mentioned that earlier, uh, that this is uh, this won't work without accountant edition. So it's gotta be QuickBooks Accountant or QuickBooks Enterprise because there's a tool here called uh, Batch Enter. And then what we're gonna do is, um, and again, this is this is what I like to call the Hector technique because really hasn't been a lot of people that have talked about doing this, but this is a sort of a way to trick QuickBooks into thinking that it could import journal entries. Um, and I'll kind of show you step by step here. So first we went to the accountant menu and then we clicked on batch enter. So that was the first step. The second step is we're going to select credit card charges. That's, that's what we're going to select. That's the type of uh, import that we're going to do. Um, and then uh, we're going to narrow these down to uh, only the account and the amount. 
uh, memo, I can leave memo there and we can put something interesting in there. So the columns that we want to have is uh, date because I can't remove date, account, amount, and memo. Okay, so I'll go ahead and click OK. And then for date, I'm just going to select a fixed date, like uh, let's say the end of the year, so whatever year is it that we're working with. And then I'm going to come go into um, Excel and then I'm going to copy all these account categories here. I'm going to copy them, just, just regular copy, right? Right click copy. And then I'm going to come into QuickBooks and then I'm going to paste them here into the account, into the account column. Perfect. Okay, then I'm going to go back into uh, Excel and take all the dollar values now. I'll copy them and I'll paste them into QuickBooks. So effectively what I'm doing is I'm about to import uh, a whole bunch of expenses going into that category. Now, they're one of the columns that I forgot to put here. It's my class column. That's the most important one. So I'm going to go into the class column here, click on add, and then I have to make sure that that in here, I'm adding the new class, which in this case, this one happens to be new construction. So uh, here on my QuickBooks, I'm going to go to the class and put new construction. And then I'm just going to copy this down. Copy down. Okay, perfect. Um, and then on the memo, I can just put here allocation of overhead year end or so, so, something like that. So I can actually uh, copy this down too. So basically this takes care of um, creating that expense transaction uh, that goes into our category. What I need to do now is the other the other group, which is the other class. I'm going to go into Excel here and then I'll copy these categories again. Go back into QuickBooks and I'll paste these. Perfect. And then I'll take now the other column, right? So this is now the remodel class, right? So I'm going to copy these dollar amounts here, go into QuickBooks, paste those in there. And I can also copy these down here so I don't have to retype these. So the same memo works. Uh, but now the class is going to be a different class. This is going to be the remodel class. Okay, so, so far um, I have uh, basically automated inputting uh, these expense categories. But, uh, but now I have total charges of 156000 that are going to be booked into uh, some sort of credit card, which is going to cost an accounting problem. So the, the trick now to do the reversal, and I'm going to have to just undo these uh, zero outs that I did here. So the trick is to now put these back on the other side sort of as negatives. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, this number and I multiply it times a negative. Um, because I'm going to need, I'm going to require these numbers to be as a negative because they're going to sort of reverse the transaction. They're going to be uh, the other side of the equation. There it is. So all these numbers need to be represented as negatives. So I'm going to go ahead and copy uh, all the expense categories again and uh, paste them one more time. But this time around, uh, I'm going to put all the negatives and this is going to basically cost the reversal that is going to give me sort of an even Steven uh, zero uh, transaction. So I'm going to uh, paste this here and then I can copy this down to also. And this is basically what I mean by tricking QuickBooks into thinking this is a journal entry because normally you would have to do a journal entry with all these, but this is just sort of expressed. There's no room for error. And then so if, if, if the class would have been unclassified, then you would leave this blank. But in this particular QuickBooks file, they use that overhead class. So we're going to go ahead and reverse that overhead class by putting that in there. Copy this down too. And then basically the most important piece is, is down here you see total charges and total credits. This is basically going to be a zero sum transaction. So it's not going to affect my balance sheet and it's not going to affect my profit and loss other than moving the classes around. But what I like to do is I like to create a credit card, a fake credit card. Uh, called CC journal entry or something like that. Okay, that way I know that that credit card is, is solely used for this particular purpose and click on save transactions and I'll click yes and QuickBooks will proceed to create all these transactions for me. Now let's take a look at the profit and loss to see what the effect on that is. So I'm going to take a look at the refresh this financial statement and this is exactly what we're trying to do. So all the expenses moved away from overhead and now they're in each individual uh, transaction. Now if you wanted to print this, this is not a journal entry, these are individual transactions, but you can go into the chart of accounts and then we can look for that particular credit card that we created, this one called CC journal entry adjustment or whatever, and then we can click here on quick report.
and then we can basically get uh, almost like a journal entry. This is not necessarily a journal entry. Let me just clean this up a little bit. Um, it's not a journal entry per se, but this would be almost like a journal entry, right? Where there's uh, debits and credits, and obviously, um, because QuickBooks allows me to show the debits and the credits, I can I can do that, and then I can make it look like a journal entry. Again, it's not a journal entry. These are credit card charges, but this is a, a way to make QuickBooks think it can do. It can import journal entries from Excel. And I know there's a couple of uh, sort of heavy topics covered here. So in conclusion, uh, the purpose of this was to take expenses that didn't have a class or they were taken to some sort of admin overhead class and use Excel to quickly uh, calculate what uh, what percentage of, 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 of each of those expenses should be allocated to each class and then use the magic of Excel to make this calculation and then make uh, QuickBooks think that um, by doing this copy and pasting of a credit card transaction, make it look like it's a journal entry and, and basically act like a journal entry. So, so although this video took you know, 18 minutes uh, to put together, think about um, how long it takes for you to do a, this humongous journal entries moving allocations around. So uh, just don't forget, you need to have QuickBooks account in addition and you need to have Excel for this to work. Um, if you have any other questions, um, you know, this uh, data entry, data import is sort of my, my specialty. Um, so go ahead and send me an email. I'll put my email up there. And uh, I hope you, you liked the video and, and I hope uh, this as well was useful for you. So thank you.